Hey, Danny. Hey, how's it going, Paulina? Hey, thanks for taking my call. You look like you're sitting in a nice place with all the palms behind you. All the palms, yeah. I got some uh, fresh chicken satays just sitting down next to me here. Just uh, <laughs> tantalizing me. <laughs> so I'm excited to sit down and chat with you here. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So I found you on LinkedIn and I wanted to share my screen with you just a second. Uh, let's see it together. Look, here you are. You know, you are one of these few people who have very good um, cover, you know, cover image. Uh, it's really good, nice. You know, it actually, in a quick glance, shows me a bit of what you do. And, you know, when people reach out to me on LinkedIn over the messenger, I quickly go to the profile to check. And if it's too hard to find, you know, exactly what their company does, you know, if it just says the founder of Digital Group X, you know, it doesn't say what exactly they do, then I just give up and don't put too much effort in. But in your case, I could quickly see that you are doing keyword optimization, keyword photography. So I can see that you obviously are helping Amazon sellers with their listings. Is that right? That's what you do? That is correct. So it looks like the banner is doing its job there. <laughs> right. So, and it says everything is my, and look, this side is the other way. So you had mirrored the image, right? <laughs> look, the, the yeah. letters is backwards. <laughs> it is backwards. Yeah. It's <laughs> cool. So can you tell me a little bit more of uh, how you came about? Are you an Amazon seller or Shopify seller yourself? Uh, yes, yeah, so 100% focus on Amazon FBA, and that's how I got started and everything is by selling my own products, my own private label products, um, and then Kenji ROI, which is what you just said there, Woo, the wind is just blowing around crazy over oh, here. Oh, the chicken will fly um, off. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but um, yeah, it all stemmed from selling my own products on Amazon FBA, and then um, from there, I realized that it is not a very common skill set to create these listings, like liaising with product photographers they don't really know the specific requirements needed for amazon and different studio photography graphic design and lifestyle kind of all mixed together it's a lot of different people that really have to be involved to create these amazon listings and so having figured that out for myself um i realized that there was demand for other sellers as well who needed the same services Hmm. So I saw many services that you list on, on your website. Uh, let me take a look again. Uh, so which one would you say is your specialty? Like out of all of these options that you do, which one is your specialty? Like where most customers, what do they order? Product photography is definitely the, the biggest specialty that we do. And the way that we stand out with that is including all the different image types that you need in one single package. So I touched on this before, the graphic design and the lifestyle and the studio, including a real model um, for the Amazon photos. Okay. So what about the nationality of the model? Uh, like, uh, like what nationality your models are in? Because now I noticed that it's important to put the proper nationality for the models depending on the marketplace. You know, um, for example, if I sell on Amazon Japan and it's not so awesome to just put, uh, you know, American faces on there, it's better that the person feels more re related to the, to the person in the picture. So what, what nationality do you use for yours? Yeah, we definitely agree with that. All of our photos are shot in Vancouver, so that's Canadian models, and we do that to match the American market. So... Most of our clients are selling in the American market. And so, you know, Canadians are pretty much the same, same looking people that are going to be in the United States. So that's why we don't use models from the Philippines or other countries like that. Yeah, I lived in Canada and this corner just is so relatable. You know, like there's th these fences between the houses and, and it's just exactly the same little garden and the beautiful grass because it's raining all the time. And it's just, just exactly what I feel like. Canada would look that's awesome so let me take a look at these pictures what do they look like so which one you're mostly proud of like what's your specialty because I see you're doing they all look like popping you know like the products like this one includes the packaging and so some of them cannot be used as the first image right the rule is that it has to be just the uh, packaging or the item but it's very nice when the person actually puts a little bit of 
promo on the packaging so you are still not against the terms of service right so you are still putting more information than just the product on there so it's not just the potato dog juice but actually just some information in the in the in the top image as well so would you say this one can can qualify for the uh, main image on amazon yeah images like that almost always will qualify um, technically, you're not supposed to be putting anything except just the product on there. Uh, but this technically is the inside of the product. It's just taken out. Um, some Amazon reps, they might have a problem with that, but we've seen very, very few problems with that. There's like a you know 2% chance that that's going to create a problem for you. And the upside of having an image like that is much higher risk than an Amazon rep telling you to remove the image. It's not going to be like you're suspended. It's going to be like, Hey, you actually just have to change this image to you to uh, not have this little piece in it. Cool. I really like this um, the text in the images, and I use that a lot for my own listings because I believe most people are lazy to read the bullet points or they just skim them. So if you portray each benefit in the picture, you know it, it really helps them to convert. Uh, so you know, I wanted to ask you about something in Europe. There, there was this error, or I don't know, the problem that I had. I wanted to have individual uh, languages on each of the images in each country. But as soon as I would change the Spanish listing to be Spanish, like right away the, the, the England one and the uh, German one would also change to Spanish. Like, do you know anything about that? Is there a new way to upload like separate images for, for European marketplace? You know um, I'm, not, I'm not particularly familiar with that. We just, for our clients, we provide all the images and everything like that. We don't actually manage the back end Seller Central for the different clients. And the vast majority of our clients are focused on the Amazon US marketplace. Um, we personally don't provide, you know, translated versions of them and everything. Um, so I can't really speak to that. Okay, so your, your main customers are from the United States for that. Okay. So what else is cool about your pictures? Tell me something else. Like, how do you come up with this creative process? And like, they all seem like so thought of. I don't know. Here's like this beautiful blurred background. And the, the puppy just really, really wants it, you know. And then you place it like at the top of the image and it's a little bit red. So it just draws the attention. So it's just like everything perfect about this picture, you know. So how do you have that good taste? Like, do you hire good photographers? Are you a photographer yourself? Like, how do you come up with those? So I'm not a photographer myself, but we do only want to work with the best photographers. Um, and there is a bit of a process too. So all of these images that are showing the product actually in use, they are specifically coming from a shot list of the main benefits of the product. So in each one of these, we're trying to show off a very specific benefit, like that image of the salad bowl cutter over there on the left-hand side. It's just showing a really easy top-down view of, hey, this is how the knife slides into your salad. You can clearly see how the product works from a top-down view of it. the knife is sliding between the slots and it looks very easy to chop the salad in that way, right? Yeah. And then yeah. below that one, there's the image of this lantern. It's clearly showing someone reading from the light of the lantern, right? That's one of the main benefits is that you can just carry this around and you can use it to read late at night when you don't want some bright lights um, and you still want enough light to read your book. So this just clearly shows that in action rather than someone having to think in their brain, oh, hey, maybe I could use this for reading. They can see someone else use it for reading and they clearly know they can receive that same benefit. Very cool, very cool indeed. All right, so is it expensive, your services? Oh, where's the pricing? Let's check. Okay, so photography. So what do I get for the starter? Lifestyle also. So you include the lifestyle pictures in this package? Yeah, so that one is lifestyle or studio images. So if you want both types of images, then you're going to have to go with the full stack photo package. And the vast majority of people choose that package over the starter one because it just is a lot better value. It comes with all three types of images, the graphic design, lifestyle, and studio. But some people, they already have good studio images done or they already have good lifestyle images done. They just need the other type. And so that is when we would do the starter photo package. Uh, do I just ship you the product? How does it work? Like um, by mail and then you do everything for me? 
Exactly. So yeah, you ship us the product from um, either directly from Amazon, we can purchase it, or sometimes directly from the manufacturer in China, you can get them to ship it before your entire inventory shipment is done. Often that's the fastest way to do it. Um, and then once we receive the sample, then it's 15 business days from that date. And we have all the photos shot and everything done and ready to upload to Amazon. You know, I believe it's a great price because I was looking at lifestyle photography and it was $1,200, the one that I did, one of my purses. I sell purses and dresses on, on Amazon. So it was just like a model showing the purse and it was 1200 for uh, seven shots. So I think your value is awesome. You will give me studio and lifestyle images for that, right? And it's going to be 10 of them. How does the choosing work? Like, you will give me access to the whole range and I will pick the ones that I like? Um, so it is a pre-choosing process. So um, after the order has gone through, the client has to fill out an intake form with any specific preferences that they have, any kind of, uh, you know, if they want any really specific photos, then you'd have to tell us that beforehand. Uh, let us know what kind of model you want and, and everything like that. And then we go ahead and create the shot list and go shoot it completely beforehand. So we don't offer the option to, hey, here's a whole lot of photos you get to choose. It's more, hey, like, tell us exactly what you want, and then we will craft you the perfect photo set based on what you told us. Okay, great. That removes a lot of work from me. I like that. <laughs> I like the services that do everything for me. So wait, but I have to a little bit, um, I prepared my facebook.com. I'm going to just look you up. Kenji ROI. Uh, let's see in the groups. So I've joined a lot of Amazon seller groups and I like to Google sort of in Facebook to search for social proof. And I see that one says, Oh, has anyone used David gold? Uh, can you, okay. Let's see. Can you, all right. All right. They use David. Yeah. Oh, okay. I recommend it. Let's see what else. Oh, there's you. So you're part of this group, right? Good morning to you crafty traders. Hello, Tradecraft. Yeah, we've had, uh, we've had all three of those guys on the Actualized Freedom podcast now, all the Seller Tradecraft guys. Very smart. Huh, cool. Okay, would like some feedback. Is anyone used? How was your experience? Somebody would like. Anyone curious? Well, I don't see anyone slamming the service, and there's actually activity people mentioning you and asking about it, which is very cool. So it seems like you guys are known and uh, good. I, I guess I will not go into any other services because you said photography is your best. Could you give me some more tips about photography? Because I tried to do it myself. So I built this box in the, in the studio and I tried to pretend I will be the photographer for my own products, but it just didn't work. Like the purses had so many silver parts on them and like it was reflecting me with my camera in it and it was just so difficult to do it so I just basically gave up on that idea making my own photos so could you tell me more what it takes to to make good photos like do you use professional studios and how does it work yeah well I think number one um, just using photographers that know what they're doing because it's not just enough to have a really high quality camera and high quality lenses, that's certainly a factor, but if the photographer doesn't know how to get the best lighting, how to get good angles of the product, and like actually what it takes to get a good photo, then it, you're just not gonna get good results completely. Um, you see a lot of people that ha they have really expensive equipment and everything like that, but they just can't craft the right perfect photo. They can't get the model to you actually you know, to do the right things. It looks posed. It looks fake. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. So number one is just work with photographers that know what they're doing a little bit better or just, just play with, play with the shot until you actually are very, you're getting the shot that you're very clear that you want to get on there. Um, number two, I would say would be lighting is super, super important. So you can see, um, maybe a good example is this, um, laundry bag up here just above your mouse right there you can see the um yeah the one like up uh, above to the right there okay. same product but up up there um the lighting on that product is it's very clear right it's evenly lit the product looks nice it's not like very dull like some other products um you'll see the lighting just looks really flat on it 
And especially on Amazon or most websites, they have a white background. And if your product looks really dull, when contrasted against a white background, then it looks even more dull than it would normally. So it's really important to have this really evenly lit lighting, well lit. Um, don't take the pictures in your gloomy apartment that has no windows or your basement or something like that. It's just going to look like crap, right? Um, and a lot of the lighting settings have to do with being able to operate the fancy DSLR camera with the right settings on it and the aperture and exposure and everything. So coming back to working with photographers that actually know what they're doing in that respect. Um, and this one too, it is really difficult to get um, the right settings on a camera with something that's really dimly lit like that. You need a, a special type of lens that's going to be able to take in a large amount of light and still have a non-grainy good looking photo and stuff like that. Yeah, um, you know, this, I noticed there's the silver, you know, and silver was that I was having issues with, you know, when I was pointing a lot of light to it, like, there was no black. And somehow in the silver, when you don't reflect a bit of black on it, it doesn't look so good, you know, so I've seen photographers putting like black cardboards on the side so that it would reflect on the silver and then makes it stand out and look so much better. Plus, there is no reflection of photographer himself in here. That is awesome. <laughs> you know, and this, oh, definitely I cannot make that one, you know, even if I use like my iPhone, what is best, best <laughs> out of focus? I don't think I can get that nice colors on that side. And, and like the light doesn't, you know how the light sometimes just uh, leaks, leaks all around. So basically shines over, takes over the whole image. Oh my God, these are very tough to make. And I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, definitely. I would recommend to anyone who's listening, not waste your time building a box like I did. <laughs> just go with the service that, that does something like that. So cool, very nice examples. Well, I have another question for you. You know how many uh, sellers choose to use, um, you know, a little bit of text in it? You know, any maybe interesting techniques, like what works and what doesn't work in the pictures? Like, you know, when I have so many competitors around me and they all sell the same product, like how... How would you say I could stand out from the others? Like, what are interesting things to do with the photos? How to make it attract people? Yeah, by far the biggest mistake I see with text on images is having way too much text. So you'll see all of the examples here. They have a really small amount of text, and the text is all fairly large and easy to read. Like, even though you're not zoomed in, you can still read what's happening on these images, right? You don't have to click and zoom in um, really close to read the text and I see that all the time where there's way too much text on there so they have to make the text really small and you can't you can't read what's going on and like we said earlier people are lazy people want to quickly be able to scan and know what about your product is good enough for them to choose yours over everyone else's they're not gonna spend a whole lot of time researching that product if they don't have to if they if they see someone else's listing that looks better put together and more professional they're gonna click off on that and they're gonna purchase that. If they see your images have way too much text all over them and it's gonna take a significant amount of work to read through everything and understand how your product is better, that's a, a lot of work that they are not gonna do if they find an easier option, right? You can get away with that if all your competitors' listings really suck and they can't, they can't optimize their information correctly, but if your competitors have any idea what they're doing, um, you're, you're going to have to step your game up and just create really clear, concise, easy to understand listings. Like this one is very clear what it's saying here. You know, it's like you can easily see what size it is. That was a, a common thing that the customers of this item, um, they had this concern. And that information is very clearly communicated in like, you don't have to look for it in more than two seconds, right? Yeah, but it's so different from when you look at it from as a, a buyer, you know, you look most effective cleaning, large size. Cool, I get it. But if you look from the eyes of the photographer or or an Amazon seller who's gonna uh, try to attempt to do something like this himself, he's thinking, okay, I'll just do 16 inches. It, I can do myself like this. But no, look at this. There's this light coming on here. If you remove that light, it will be like dark and more like brownish looking and it's not gonna have that cleaning effect into it. And there's this spark here, like clean, ting it's clean you know it has all these little details that is so hard to make when you don't know what you're doing you're so right you know it's just i am 
I'm really impressed with these photos. Thank you very much for um, telling me a bit of that. Is there something else that you could tell us um, if we would, let's say, order only the lifestyle images from you? What would you recommend? Is it better, you know, if I have limited budget and I don't have so much money to spend, is it better I order just the studio images from you or just the lifestyle images and do my own studio image for the first? I mean, I think that really depends on what you have access to. Let's say that you're going to do either the studio or lifestyle images yourself. So you got to ask yourself, can you actually create good quality studio images with good quality lighting and have the white background like Amazon needs? Um, if you're confident that you can do that, then maybe the lifestyle images are more difficult for you. But more commonly, um, if people have any photography experience, they are going to be better at shooting lifestyle photos because that's what people want to do for fun is they shoot photos of them out hiking and stuff like that. So, and most people, if they have experience, it's going to be experienced shooting lifestyle photos. So the studio photography is probably the harder skill set to master, but it's also, it's also can be more difficult with the lifestyle shoot, depending on what product it is. Sometimes you need to go to a special location with some special props and like a certain type of model, it's like very hard to get your hands on. So it, it really depends on what product, which one is going to be easier for you to do and also your own skill set, where you feel if, if your own photography skills exist, um, you, you know, which one are you weaker or better at? Mm, okay. Can I open Amazon, um, dot com and just look at something with you together so there is this uh okay so if you look at the images and many like okay i was looking at selling dolls and but there are like so many results over one hundred thousand results just dolls you know and so like differentiation is totally hard especially if there is already a doll that looks like a baby and something else so could you comment on these photos that you see right now? Like, what are they doing wrong and what they could do better? Do you have, a, um, like, when I come to you as a customer, will I have to tell you exactly what I want for my top picture or will you give me some recommendations and help me a little bit with that? So we always fill in the gaps as long as we are not told otherwise. So, you know, we've done hundreds and hundreds of photo sets and so we have our set of best practices but if the client has a very specific request, then we will we will do whatever they request as a specific request. Otherwise, we assume that we should be going with our best practices. So, um, at one example, if you scroll up one row there. This one? Um, up to that one. Yeah, you can see this, this baby on the left here, the Melissa and Doug. Um, that one is a pretty dull looking image. That's what I'm talking about, dull looking lighting, especially against the backdrop of the pure white. It looks it looks dull like it's over sitting in the corner out of the lights, right? But if you go to the next image right next to it over to the right, shot by the same company, it's much better lit. It stands out. It, it kind of pops, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, the lighting there can still be improved, but even between those two images, you can see one of them stands out way more than the other one. Um, also, uh, technically against terms of service, but there's the kid holding the baby and that shows a lot more information. It shows exactly how big the baby is because people can clearly see this little girl and they can kind of um, easily see how big the doll is. Um, and it's just, it stands out compared to the rest of them. The other ones are just dolls and this one's a little baby holding that. So Except that is against the uh, terms of service. I, I would be scared to use that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's a very small, easy thing to fix. Like you could have a, uh, you could have a hero image that is the product only that you could easily switch it out to if Amazon asks you to. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty low risk scenario with a uh, potential high upside. Right. Yeah, anything else you're noticing? Um, I, I'm just seeing like mostly, mostly differences in lighting. Like that's almost always the biggest thing. Like most of these people are doing a good job of filling the entire image and making their product as large as possible. And so that's not really a way to stand out, but I'm seeing lots of ones with really poor lighting, like this 11 inch soft body doll mm -hmm. is they've gone through all this effort to add in the extra icons and everything like that to make it stand out, but they haven't even gone through the effort to make a really well lit photo, um, which 
is more important than adding all these fancy logos and everything like that. Um, That's true. So, like, you know, yeah. when uh, some things like in the apps, I'm a software developer, so I see everything from a developer's point of view. You know, when you want to show something that has been deactivated and you want to draw less attention to that, you gray it out usually, right? And you brighten up the buttons or the things, the features that you want them to look. So this one looks like grayed out a little bit, you know, like it's dulled down. Yeah, you are right. That's true. And like this one in the middle is so bright and so poppy. Yeah, this is cool. Totally. It's much more eye-catching, and when there's that many products on the page for people to choose from, it's small little things like that that are going to catch people's eye, and that's the difference between their decision to click on your product over your competitor's products. Hmm. Very cool. All right, I guess I will not hold you up longer. I see that you're really a pro at what you do. What's your actual background? Like, what are you, um, you became an entrepreneur. Uh, how did you come about? Like, what did you do before? Uh, before, I was a carpenter who hated my job, and I was just traveling the world just attending longboard races and uh, risking my life for an adrenaline rush, basically, living in a van. Um, and I just really hated carpentry. So after a near-death experience racing longboards in the Philippines, um, almost hit a motorcycle head-on during a longboarding race, and I was really crazy. I just, uh, I just had a moment where I realized I don't want to do carpentry for the rest of my life. And I just dove head on into Amazon FBA and learning everything I possibly could about that. And um, with the goal of stopping to do carpentry because I hated it. And, um, you know, now three and a half years later, I am happy to say that I have not done carpentry in you know, something, something like two and a half years. And uh, just dive full into this digital marketing world where, um, you know, right now I'm currently living in Bali and just enjoying everything that is to enjoy out here and so many other digital nomads or you know, the other entrepreneurs out here that are very inspiring to be around. And um, yeah, it's been good. Cool. That is a very nice story. Very inspiring indeed. So you spent five years to learn the carpentry and then you worked at it a bit or, or at least it says five years experience. Right? I'm, I'm not sure if the studies took that long. But after that, you just decided, okay, that's not for me, right? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I would rather just completely change career paths than live another 30-year career in something that I hate doing. This is very, very nice because it's not like we fail at something, but we learn. And then we, like in my case, I learned to appreciate, you know, you go experience something that is not exactly synchronizing with you personally. And then you learn to appreciate that something else that you discover, you know, and like it's, you know, in Turkey, they have this example. They say, if you have a donkey and you just feel so depressed and sad, you know, oh, I'm just alone with a donkey. But then somebody takes your donkey away, you know, you suddenly like, you know, my donkey is gone. I am even more depressed now, you know. And then the next day, donkey comes back and you're like happy again. And then you hundred times more appreciate that you had this donkey and that is your life. I'm just saying that sometimes you have to completely put yourself into something else completely. Like you jumped from carpentry to Amazon FBA and look at you now. You're happy and you live in Bali and enjoy your life, making a lot of money as I saw from the numbers on your LinkedIn profile. And I'm, I'm really excited to see that you achieved that far. Awesome. Well, thanks you for having me on, Paulina. It was great chatting with you here. And um, thanks for everyone for tuning in. Thanks for coming. Take care.